Hey everybody, Z Garcia here. Today we're gonna fall down the rabbit hole and avoid the Queen's wrath in Alice's Garden. This is a drafting and tile laying game in which you are going to be collecting tiles of various shapes. You are going to be placing them into your own garden and then you are going to be scoring victory points at the end of the game. Whoever makes the most victory points is, of course, the winner in the game. And you are trying to get all the symbols on those tiles to line up just right to complete several ways to score victory points. Let's go ahead and take a look at how it works. We'll come on back after that. I'll tell you what I think of it. Each player is going to have one of these boards here, though I'm only going to be showing you one for the explanation. Then we've got all of these bags, and they show you the kind of shape that goes in there. So you're going to fill this when you're setting up the game with the, uh, the tiles that have that shape. They're going to have, of course, be broken up into quadrants, and each one's going to show you a different thing, which I'll go over in just a sec. You'll set all these in play, the ones that are a single square. Those are the bonus tiles. You can set that aside for now. And then you've got a little scoreboard here, uh, a little pad. We'll come back to it in just a minute. And then you are good to go. Star player is the uh, token is this hat here, and uh, we are good to go. So let's say I am going to be the start player. To begin the game, I pick one of the bags, and I draw out a number of tokens equal to the number of players plus one. Let's say I'm playing with three people. So I'm going to bring out four of these. There we go. And then I will pick one and I will add it to my board somewhere. So I might do, let's say, this here. Like that. Then the next player will take one and they'll place it on their board. And then the third and final player will take one and they'll place that on their board. There's one left over. And this is going to go to the next player clockwise from me. So I'll be the last player right now. That player, the player who has the star player token, will select any one of these. So let's say they take this one and they reveal pieces just equal to the number of players. You pulled out an extra one just during the first round to have one that sort of trails. Okay, one that's left behind. So they pull out three from here. We reveal these. You will notice that these are, uh, you can reverse them, you can flip them over, but the, uh, the illustrations are the same on both sides. It just allows you to mirror the piece. So they bring these out, and then they'll take one. The one they take and place could be the one that was left over from the previous round. Could be this one right here. But let's say they take that one and they place it. The next player they'll take... Um, they like this one that was left over from the first round, so they'll take that, and it comes back to me, and I place one of these two. So I would take a look, and I would say, oh, I'm going to place uh, this one here like that. You can do it however you want to. This one is the one that remains. The next player would be the start player. They pick one of the bags, they pull out three, and we keep on going until the game is over. And the game's going to be over when someone cannot place a piece. If they cannot place a piece during that final round, they'll take one bonus piece instead, and then we score everything. So let's talk about the scoring itself and the different illustrations, what they mean, all of that. So you're going to see some of the illustrations are mushrooms. They're going to be scored at the end of the game. For every column that you have that contains at least two mushrooms, you're going to get eight victory points. So this one right here, of which there are two there already, that's eight points, guaranteed, already. Uh, the chess pieces, if they are in the center lane, for each one there, you're going to get five victory points. So I've already got five there and five there for ten points. The trees, you are going to score uh, lines. If there are at least two trees, you're going to score how far apart they are, including the spaces where the trees are. So let's take a look at a little example, shall we? I'm going to put that piece there. And I'm going to put this piece here, and uh, let's just put that there for the sake of completing it. So for this line, there's a tree there, and the next one over is right here. So for that, I'm going to get one, two, three, four, five victory points. You would do that for every line. If there are two trees next to each other, so something like that, then it's just one, two points, okay? 
Obviously, when you place a piece, it has to go entirely on the board, etc., etc. All the obvious rules that I'm sure you're assuming are correct. So there you go. Those are the trees. We've got down here these uh, the court cards, or you know the playing cards. Whenever you play those, those are going to have an immediate effect. That's not just at the end of the game for scoring. So let's say that my board looks like that, and I play this piece here. Well, I just introduced one, and it's touching one more. As soon as I do that, I'm going to collect a bonus token from in here. And like I said, these are simply the same figures, but on a single square. So that one happens to be a tree. All right. If it connects to more than one at the same time, so say something, um, let's see, how do I do it? Something like that. Then I'm going to collect, I'm touching two at the same time, I'm going to collect two bonus tokens. Two of these single pieces. And then lastly, we have the roses for which you are going to score if you have a large grouping of them. So if we've got something like uh, this, there's a group there of four, so I'm going to score 16 points for that, up to a group of five for which I get 25 points. And you score your groups of, uh, of roses. You're also, at the end of the game, going to have to place out these single pieces anywhere you can. You have to put them out. Everyone you cannot put out is going to cost you five points. And then also any empty area you have, whether it be made up of a single square or multiple squares, every empty area is minus five points as well. So there you go, those are all the things you score for. The chess pieces, groups of flowers, the mushrooms in a column, uh, the trees in a line, and then negative points for areas empty, negative points for these unplaced. And that's all there is to it. So. There you go. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how the game works. You are, you know, trying to be puzzly, trying to manipulate everything you draft and how you place it to maximize scoring, not just in one way from one tile placement, but possibly doing several things all at once, right? When I can put this here, why, why put it there and get eight points for this column when I might be able to put it, say, there and get eight points for this column and five points for that there, and maybe this was already next to some cards so maybe i'll draw a bonus one right so that's the idea there that's it that should uh, be enough to give you a sampling of how this is going to feel let's go ahead and go back up top let me tell you what i think of it i have to tell you right off the bat i'm a little bit tired of these polyomino games there's been a lot of them it seems to be the uh just one of the styles of games lately that continues to come out. Everybody's made a polyomino game by now. And then, coupled with that, there have been a lot of gardening games. Or sort of, you know, about nature. Flora and fauna kind of games, right? And so going into this, I was a little bit worried about that. Not to mention... I'm really over Alice in Wonderland themes. I mean, any any old card game, any old tile laying game, anything that doesn't have a theme, and they're like, what could it possibly be? Slap Alice in Wonderland in there, pretend it's kooky and a crazy theme, and, and you're good to go. Mad Hatter, whatever, whatever, that's your theme. So I went into it worried, that's what I'm saying. So let's go ahead and talk about it. The theme, yes, it's tired. Uh, the Alice in Wonderland thing, the polyomino thing, that gets a thumbs down. It does not surpass that. The theme here is just not bringing it for me. The aesthetics are pretty good. Uh, I like the cover especially. I think the cover is lovely, okay? But the tiles are a little small. This co copy I have, the, um, the tiles are cut slightly off center, which is visually less than pleasing, okay? Uh, and they're just kind of tiddly winky a little bit. They're they're a little on the small side. Uh, the box is small though, so what can you expect? And there's a bunch of bags in here with a bunch of tiles. Bags are nice. I like the printing on them and they work well. So the aesthetic I'm split on, okay? The replay value is actually very nice because of the drafting. The drafting is what keeps it keeps it uh, keeps it high. Uh, players get to pick which bag they draw from, and then. Depending on the turn order, you'll get to take one of the things out there. So your choices are not tremendous. You still have to pick one of the, you know, 
two, three, or four tiles out there. But they are interesting, and there is a, a, a nice amount of variability and discoverability and way things develop based on turn order, based on what tiles came out, all of that. So the replayability for me, I think, stays quite high. The game arc, it's okay. There's some tension near the end of the game where you have to start really thinking about, well, what areas am I going to leave empty? That's bad. And am I going to have too many of these little bonus one square tiles, which is also really bad. So there's some tension there. There's some of uh, the, you know, near the end, you're still thinking about, well, when it's my turn, I better pull this shape. And I better be really careful, or hopefully somebody pulls it before me. Um, I'll talk about, you know, strategy and tactics in a second, how that's really important, actually. But, so there's, there's a little bit of tension near the end of the game, but largely, the game arc is a bit flat, let's call it. Ease of play, very smooth game. I love the fact that... Um, my favorite rule is probably that there is one lingering piece and it might be a different shape than the one that just got pulled. I really like that. I, th I think it's a lovely little touch and it's, it's, it's nice, it changes up the game a little bit. It's not, um, it's the kind of rule that perhaps seems a little bit obvious once you've seen it in play, but it's, uh, it's wonderful and I'm glad it's in there. Lastly, tactics, strategy, luck. It's good. It's very tactical, right? I mean, it's a game about, you know, once you've discovered something or you got a tile that gives you the one tree, you're like, okay, well, I better get the other tree, you know, somewhere far away from that. That's going to be some point, so let me get that. But picking what tiles you um, take, obviously, when somebody else draws from the bag, but also which bag do you draw from, right? There's the game lives and dies by you being able to help yourself especially when it's your turn to pull tiles out, and deny your opponent's solid placement. Now, you don't know what figures are coming up, as in what is actually printed on the tile, but you on your turn get to decide what shape it is. So if you can make your board work for you and have a good turn yourself while messing with your opponents and having their board break up, not really have good placement, then you're doing something right. So yeah, not supremely strategic, but a nice amount of tactics. Uh, and, and I enjoyed it. I, I found my, myself going into it again the first time I played thinking, oh, another tile lane game, you know, another one of these um, uh, different uh, Tetris games, right? I mean, different arrangement, the Alice in Wonderland thing. But the more I played it that first play and, and subsequent plays, I... Yeah, I like it. It's a good one. I, I enjoy my plays of this. It's captivating. You know what I think it is, ultimately, is the scoring is really neat. The different ways in which you score, the four or five things you, you account for, they work well. They, they, they all are interesting. So, there you go. Overall, for me, I'm going to give this one a bottom line of 7.5 out of 10, which means it gets a seal of approval. And again, that's me kind of being over a lot of the things that this brings to the table. So if you like Alice in Wonderland themes, this is going to be a, a hit for you, I think. If you enjoy polyomino games, you want more of them, here's a good one. It's neat. It's engaging. I think you're going to like it. And if you just like puzzly games in general, then also this is something you're going to want to check out. So there you go. That is Alice's Garden, 7.5 out of 10 from me. My name is Z Garcia. I want to see you on the next one.